I talk to her, I sing to her, I call her by her name. It just feels so nice, but so weird. <laughs> Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. My name is Camille, if you haven't been here before. I am a millennial mama who loves beauty, books, and God. And here on my channel, I do a lot of lifestyle content, including motherhood. And speaking of motherhood, this is going to be my second trimester recap. I hope you guys are excited. I saw that the first recap did really well, and quite frankly, I do a lot of these motherhood videos as a reminder to myself of the journey that I've been on since I wasn't able to do it with my first. So stuff that I'm gonna be talking about in this video include uh, symptoms that I've been feeling throughout the second trimester, things that I've been craving, and things that I can no longer eat or drink because I have an aversion to it, movements, because now I'm at a stage where I can feel the baby moving all the time. And then uh, just like small little preparations we've been doing to uh, await the arrival of our little girl. And if you don't already know, yes, I am having a little girl this time around. Previously, I had a son, and so I'm very excited to kind of complete the whole nuclear family, which is the dream that I've had since I've been a little girl. So this first one is the symptom breakdown. Currently, I am in my third trimester. I just started, so the second trimester is still fresh in my brain. But the most prominent symptoms I've been experiencing are not the best symptoms. I've been having really, really bad sciatica pain. It's like lower back pain that causes like a pinched nerve feeling and it shoots a pain spike straight down your leg and it makes it very, very hard to sit down, to walk, to stand up, to get up. So I've been experiencing that throughout the entire second trimester. I think I got it late in the first trimester and now in the third trimester it's the worst it's ever been. I have to take a lot of breaks to like just stand up, walk, stretch, and <laughs> here I go. Having to change my positioning in order to feel comfortable and I had spoken to my OB and when I brought it up as a concern he was saying there's nothing that we can really do like he could prescribe or refer me to a physiologist physiotherapist but I had done that postpartum with Adriano and in my opinion especially because now I live very far from the closest like pregnancy or postpartum clinic to do physiotherapy it almost for me would not make sense to go because it wasn't that helpful the next one is nausea I know I talked about that in the first trimester recap a lot because I was experiencing it pretty much every day at that point and second trimester I I will say halfway through it sort of slowed down a bit. The nausea is manageable. The only thing that isn't and what makes it difficult is the accompanying heartburn that I get. My stomach acid rises. I feel like it sits in my chest and in my esophagus half of the time because it's so uncomfortable and I feel that burning sensation. But I've been taking Tums for it. They work for me at least. These are all normal and pretty common if you do find yourself pregnant, but those are kind of like the only things that I would say ha that have been bad. Something different from my previous pregnancy, I had carpal tunnel in my hands, both hands, and so it made it very hard to like do things. I couldn't work because I had a hard time typing. I don't have that this time around. Fingers crossed that I don't end up getting it in the third trimester. Something that I've been using to help cope with these things for the nausea, like I said, I was using the Tums. I do have the like over-the-counter generic ginger pills that do help still. And then for sciatica, something that's been really helping is doing the icing method, taking ice packs and putting it on my lower spine. I believe it's 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off. I can't take the cold too much. So I do about like maybe five to seven minutes on. I have been seeing online that using heat does provide like a temporary relief, which it does. And I know this because when I go to take a shower, I let it spray directly on my lower back and it feels so, so good. If I'm not mistaken, sciatica is kind of like, there's a swelling that's caused around the lower back. And so with the ice, it kind of makes the swelling subside. Whereas with the heat, it makes it numb 
but it doesn't subside and so you still feel it afterwards. I might be wrong if, if I am and you're a doctor or something, please let me know in the comments below so I'm not spreading misinformation. One more thing that helped me with the sciatica is a belly band. I think I talked about it a little bit in my pregnancy exercise video. If you haven't seen that yet, I will link it here. It looks like this. This is it rolled up. It looks like a WWE championship belt or something, but it's really the motherhood championship belt. This part right here is very stretchy and very um, supported. That holds your belly in place, whereas the rest of it kind of loops around your back. If your partner has ever stood behind you and held up your belly with their arms, it gives you that same supported feeling, which is so relieving because we all know, you know, carrying a pregnant belly is not the most comfortable thing in the world and especially for our backs it creates a lot of pressure I walk a lot nowadays because I've decided to kind of make my life a little bit more active even though I'm pregnant it's very light exercising but when I am walking on my walking pad, I am using this almost every time. If you are looking for one yourself, I will link some options in the description bar below. So, uh, talking about cravings and aversions, in my first trimester recap video, I talked a lot about being addicted or craving sugar, and that hasn't changed, although, because I had to do the glucose test within the time frame of the second trimester, I've been trying to curb that addiction. And I'm happy to say that I did pass. I do crave Werther's Original Candies. I've loved them since I was little. And second thing that I always crave, Skittles, specifically the purple ones, because these are my favorite. Another thing that I've been having a lot of, which is not really a surprise if you know me, I love milk. <laughs> And I will drink a plain glass of milk any time of the day. Like, I'll have it on its own. I'll have it with food. It's not different that I am drinking milk, but the amount that I'm drinking is quite a lot. Right now, um, Adriano is about to turn two next month, and he is now switched over to 2%, which is what I drink. And so we share the milk, and here in Canada, when you buy milk, uh, you have the option of buying it in a carton and then you also have the option of buying it in bags. In the bags you do get three mini bags. I would say on average a Canadian household will have these bags and consume them within maybe two weeks-ish. But in my household those three bags last about two days. <laughs> I've been really enjoying popsicles lately. Sorry about the mess in the back. They're from the brand Del Monte. They're strawberry popsicle that actually has bits of real strawberry like frozen within it. And it's so freaking good. I can't recommend it more, especially if you're someone that is experiencing nausea. It just makes you love being alive. <laughs> And then in terms of aversions, I haven't really had any new ones pop up. Unfortunately, I am a pop drinker. I know when you're pregnant, you're not supposed to be having much soda. Some of them are caffeinated and a lot of them have so much sugar in them. But I have about one, I would say one a day. <laughs> and before, I was having a lot of Coke. I mean, that's my favorite pop but I know it's bad and people call it rest cleaner and that has changed in the second trimester. I've actually transitioned from having Coke to having Nest Tea. I kind of fill the void of having pop with Nest Tea. And then for the carbonation, I've actually transitioned to Orange Crush. When I drink water or pop or juice, it has to be like ice cold. I do drink a lot of water now that I'm pregnant. It's probably like five to six bottles a day, which are 500 milliliters each. I mean, it might be copium, but I'd like to think that I do drown out the pop with the water. I don't know if the body really works that way, but it has to be ice cold. Otherwise I won't really drink it and I won't enjoy it. So the next part is about baby movements. Um, if you're a first time mom, or if you love the whole pregnancy journey, then you'll know that this is one of the most satisfying and it's like a miracle moment. 
to feel your baby move or kick inside your belly and know that it's not you doing it. <laughs> I'm not sure if that will make sense to anyone who hasn't been pregnant before, but it's both alien, but also validating. And it feels so relieving every time I feel my baby move because I know that she's in there and she's all cozy in her little space in my belly and I know she can hear me and I know right now she can also see light so sometimes I'll just stand beside the balcony door with my stomach out just letting her see the sunlight that comes in and then I'll feel her move I talk to her I sing to her I call her by her name because we have actually chose a name already it just feels so nice but so weird I think it was now about two and a half weeks ago that Jericho had felt her move for the first time. When I look down at my belly and she moves, I can see it a little bit. Like there's a little bit of a little recoil, I guess, within my stomach elasticity. So I see her kick, but you can't really tell unless you're me. So I've had him look at my belly and see if he could see it. He doesn't see it yet, but he can feel her kick now from the outside. And so that was a really nice moment because husbands and our partners don't really get to see or feel the baby until that moment when they feel them for the first time, like on their own hand kick. You know, they can see the ultrasounds and they can be there to hear the heartbeat and everything, but there's just something different about the experience of growing the baby within you and then being alongside someone doing that. So every chance that we get where I know she's awake and I know she's moving, I kind of give him a few minutes to just, you know, sit there with my belly and like feel it and know that she's in there. <laughs> it helps them create that bond even while she's in the womb. Last thing I'm going to talk about are preparations. We have moved since the last baby. Adriano was born in a different condo and we've moved to another condo downtown Toronto. So our next baby will be born here. Like even my OB in my hospital where I'm going to deliver has changed. So everything's kind of new, kind of not new. Like we know what to expect, but we don't really know what the hospital even looks like. But surprisingly, my life has come full circle. I'm actually delivering at the hospital where I was born. And so never, ever, ever thought in a million years that that would happen. There's a funny story behind it and I'll talk about it in the third trimester, but everything's kind of different. Here we have a lot more space than we did in the last place, but still with a running hyper toddler and a newborn baby, oh and also a cat, we still might find it a little bit tight. And so right now what I've been doing is really organizing our home, you know, I'm purging stuff that we don't need anymore that I can get rid of, maybe things we can replace in the future when our children are big, certain appliances and, and what not and like clothes I'm trying to get rid of I've been donating a lot to the Salvation Army that's near us as well as through buy nothing groups on Facebook which if you're not part of those are really good actually I just discovered them in, in the second trimester I've gotten a few things for our family and for this baby that's coming and I've cleaned it up and yeah it's pretty awesome because um, people are always donating stuff on there for people in need of certain things. So yeah, I've been organizing all our stuff, purging what I can, using fake Facebook Marketplace to kind of, you know, eliminate some of the stuff we've been hoarding since the move. I'm really looking forward to being able to recap for you guys stuff that's been different. And also now that we're nearing the end of the journey, I'm excited to not only meet my daughter, but just to be done with pregnancy because this time around has been, like I said, very difficult. Definitely worth it. It's always going to be worth it. Of course, my camera died as soon as I was as soon as I got to the outro. This is my second trimester, so I did find out a little bit more information about maybe some challenges or difficulties I might have when it comes to delivering this baby. I was told that I have a low-lying placenta, which later on in a pregnancy can cause complications. Obviously, if your placenta is sitting very low, it's very close to like the birthing canal and it's very close to like your pelvis area. And not only does it cause can it cause some pain for the mom, but for the baby, it kind of can restrict their space. I 
think you could be a little bit more prone to getting uterine tears or rips. It can injure the baby and I was a little afraid at first when I found out, but I do feel like I'm in good hands with my OB. My family doctor also reassures me and makes me feel confident that things are gonna go well. They are continuing to keep an eye on how the pregnancy is progressing. I mentioned in the first video also that I have a fibroid, which unfortunately is still continuing to grow but right now it is not something that I was told I had to be worried about and it's not something that we will have to have surgery to remove. We were given a due date now. We were told January 12th would be her birth date, but because I have a low-lying placenta and also because I had already opted to have a planned C-section, they set the date because my OB is the one who's going to deliver. And so he books the appointment for the surgery on the day that's obviously most convenient to him and closest to the date as possible. One thing I wanted to mention is when you do have a low-lying placenta, you don't have a choice. It's pretty much 99.9% .9 your only option is to have a C-section. It kind of works out because that's what I wanted to do since that's what I did with my first pregnancy. I was in labor for 36 hours with Adriano and that was very difficult. I tried my best to have a regular delivery. Obviously the cards were not in my favor. I was not able to get past the eight centimeter dilation. And so I had to go into an emergency C-section, which was a little bit traumatizing. I will be honest. It was something I had nightmares and I can make a whole separate video about my experience, but that's kind of the reason why I didn't do like a birth story is because I don't want other people to feel scared or intimidated about the idea of having a c-section because usually I think the experience that people have is not like mine. So yeah, they gave us the date. I am scheduled for my c-section. It's early January. It's gonna be on January 7th, which is bittersweet because it's actually my parents anniversary that day and so I know every single time that we celebrate our daughter's birthday. I'm also going to have my parents in mind and I'm grateful for that. I am excited, nervous, anxious, but more happy to know that that's booked and I don't have to think about that anymore other than the fact that I need to be mentally and physically prepared by January 7th to be having surgery to meet our daughter. All the stuff that you were seeing behind me when I was standing in the kitchen are the Facebook Marketplace stuff that I'm selling and I would say I do a pretty good job at selling on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, if you guys want any tips on how to set up items on Facebook, Facebook Marketplace or like tips and tricks to be able to be successful on Facebook Marketplace, let me know also in the comments. I think that's basically it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know these recaps are very long. I do hope that going through each section really helps put into perspective how the trimester is going. Maybe it's relatable for you. I hope that we're going through the same thing so that I know that I'm not alone. And then you know that you're not alone. If I can even help just one mom get through her sciatica pain, I would be more than happy. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Okay, so the track second, blah, I can't speak. And I know when you're pregnant, sue me, what? To a physiolo, uh, what are they called? <laughs> Physiotherapist. <laughs>